All right. Good morning, everyone. Good to have you here. Paul Traney. I'm going to dive into uh, this contest that we have going on. And uh, especially you as an Illustrator user, how this you can kind of gain an edge in this contest uh, that I'm going to share with you. So thanks so much for joining me. Uh, feel free to hit share, like, all that fun stuff would be fantastic. I'd really appreciate it. I'm, gonna, I'm doing that right now. And uh, yeah, share. All right, fantastic. Good to have you here. Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel, Mark from Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, Amez, Manar, and everyone. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to dive right into this, and I'm going to show you the uh, basically this little contest that we have going on. Again, just giving you reason to kind of dive into and just play with some things in Illustrator. This is the challenge right here. So. All right, happy Monday to Dana Pride joining me and Afroja. Fantastic. All right, so uh, this is the challenge, the Art of Music Album Art Design Challenge, just so you know. And it uh, looks like it's already pinned if you're following me or watching on uh, Facebook. You can see that pinned comment, and I can actually uh, paste it over here as well. So if you're joining me on um, Facebook or wherever you're, you're joining me. So, uh, art of music, album, art to design challenge. I kind of talked about this about a week ago, I think, or at least when it first launched. Uh, but basically you're creating album art, uh, as we scroll down, uh, see the contest instructions. So I'm jumping kind of to the bottom of the page. Here's the creative brief. Here's the artist. And then here's some images and paint textures and stuff. Okay. So that's what's going on. Jesse Jupe from uh, from Finland. Fantastic. Good to have you here. From Libya in the house. This is great. Uh, DG, DG as well. Um, awesome. Uh, th my hope is that you learn a lot. But you know what? Even if you don't learn anything, you have some free res resources right here. So uh, again, I've already shared this link. If all you need to do is just kind of click to the contest instructions below, boom, and you have access to these templates, images, and paint textures. So I'm gonna click on those links and I'll show you what those look like. And then I'm also gonna show off or show you the creative brief. So the stock images that we're giving to you for free we're, are loading up right now. And you can sync those to your desktop like I'm doing right here. You can see it's all these images. Since they're um, in my Creative Cloud, it's a Creative Cloud Files folder, and then all you need to do is hit this little save button right up here, and then next thing you know, it's on your desktop. Again, if you're a Creative Cloud member, if you need to know how to get to that, right up here, boom, go to Files, Open Folder. It'll open up this folder, and then you just locate the one that's the PS Album Art. So basically, I'm giving you some free stuff, stuff, because I can. Uh, so the link for the challenge is the pinned comment, so you can see that right there. Um, also, this Chroma Supply, so that's the next link right here, these paint textures, Chroma Supply. Again, download those paint textures, they're awesome. I've already done, oop, I've already done that, and we can see those. This is the thing about this stuff. First of all, these are amazing, right? Look at these. Awesome work. I want to show you how you can do some of this color manipulation uh, and using some type for our album art. The thing is a lot of the entries I feel are, uh, you know, they can look similar because, uh, ch -ch -ch. Um, because a lot of people are using the same graphics. Okay, and by the way, here's the, uh, check out the full terms and conditions, uh, by the way, as well. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, let's dive into this right now. Uh, the artist is Lake Stovall, so that's what I'm going to do in Illustrator. Here I am. Here's my album cover arts design right here, at least a sort of 1500 by 1500, and then I'm going to start creating right in here, like... Like Stovall, just like that. Using the properties panel, let's just change that fill color. There it is. Oh, there it is. 
Fantastic. All right. I don't like it. <laughs> Jermaine does not like it. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Maybe you don't like those uh, paint swooshes. I think they're awesome. Uh, but nonetheless, let's kind of take a look at this. I'm going to start with the artist's name. And if you take a look at the creative brief, it's all about creating this these, vi these vibrant colors. Let me open that up because this is what's going to drive the design. I'm not doing these things just, to, uh, just, just for kicks, right, or in a vacuum. I'm doing them for a purpose. And again, as soon as Word opens, oh, took forever, Word. Why you got to be that way? All right. Uh, so this is what I want to focus on. Full of energy, soulful, and Afro-influenced is. So duotone, contrast, and minor blemishes are okay. Colors, soft pink, magenta. So I'm going to take all of this, copying it, and I'm going to bring it right into good old, whoosh, you guessed it, into Illustrator. So I'm going to keep this stuff in mind as I start to design. Uh, this is a variable concept font. I'm going to take that wa uh, uh, some of this in this uh, size down. All right. Cool. Let's get started. Bianca, you're awesome, and I thank you for hanging out with me. Right on. T. Hab, as well. Welcome. Paul Tranny here. Uh, this is my artwork. Everybody's looking to be impressed. Maybe I want to do something with the type type first off. Right, I could do something kind of cool like this. I personally like going into my properties panel. Properties panel really is where everything is at, right? It gives me all the properties for my element that's selected. Okay, right down here, I can kind of click into the character. And uh, I just want to make this all caps. So right in here, just like in Photoshop, click Lake Stovall, just like that. Uh, let's decrease maybe the spacing in between the letters. Let's make it nice and tight, kind of like that. Okay, I'm gonna do some fun things with this as well. There's a couple different ways I can analyze this, and I really wanna add some colors as well, but I, I, I have this cool idea of like, it being soulful and having some flow, and maybe this isn't the best font, but I'm gonna start with a really basic font, and I'm gonna go in here, and I'm just gonna grab the scissors tool. So right over here, grabbing the scissors, right? And actually, before I even do that, I'm going to make sure this type, I'm going to create outlines, right? So there's all those individual points. You can see them right there. And now I'm going to use the scissors. And I'm just going to try this to see if this works. Uh, it is a variable typeface. I'm going to chop this. Uh, hold on, not scissors. I want the knife. Sorry about that, did I say scissors earlier? I usually use the scissors, but I'm gonna try the knife because I'm just gonna cut a soulful flow out of all this, Shh. like that. I just sliced these letters, just like that. Slice them all, and now let's just kind of, not nudge that, let's kind of nudge these over. Selecting these, not that. Let's ungroup it first, ungroup. There we go, I just sliced this, and I'm just gonna move this over. Like, this is kind of like a, kind of like a sound wave, just giving it kind of a cool look. You see what's happening? I kind of sliced that. It was super easy with my knife, this palette knife, okay? Usually I'd say don't play with knives, but I'm not gonna be that corny, right? Even taking these right down here, sliced it again. Taking these, the bottom part of these letter, letters and bring them in like that. Something like that, this I think is kind of cool, right? And do I take this now and do I stack it, right? Again, just giving you ideas. And I was trying to do kind of a soulful flow is what I was doing, uh, but, you know, sort of full of energy, like it's vibrating, something like that. Uh, again, this is what you want to do, Cody, is you want to take... Uh, um, you want to you wanna probably take a typical font and start manipulating it, okay? But know that there are other fonts that we could pick out there. Uh, uh, the paint swooshes, uh, I think they were made by hand. I'm not sure. Just got a question around that. Uh, they did come from, as you can see right in here, Chroma Supply. I personally think they look 
like they are actually like real paint swooshes, but I want to emulate some of this in um, in Illustrator, right? But these are awesome. It actually looks looks like it could be digital. It's almost you know it's almost too clean to uh, to be real. Is kind of what I'm thinking. Okay. All right. So we're we're gathering ideas. Let's move those over. Let's make sure I have some color since they're off to the side, taking this, scaling it up, and we can have some fun with this text. Again, just giving you ideas. Uh, Suvojit, good to have you here as well. Um, so I could take this and I can maybe even sample from those color splashes that we had, right? Let's take this one, Chroma Supply, dropping it in here, and this is you know, potentially some paint that I can use, or at least do I take hints from some of those colors? So let's do that. Grabbing a color. Grabbing another color. That's better than that one. There we go. Oh, it's ugly. Right, I want them to be within the kind of the same sort of color family, like that. Do I want these to be the same or different? I don't know. Let's go with that. You could see obviously what I'm doing here. Give me a second. I'm trying to design live. We'll go with blue. We're gonna go with this vibrant, like tealish blue. Kind of right in here. Like that. And then we'll go finish it up with some nice darker color right there. Again, just a thought for designing this album color al album uh, album art. Okay. A uh, thousand other things I can do. Uh, I would say this is pretty good. Like this is an idea. This is a very flat, bold design. Uh, interesting thought that I can kind of that I can run with. Uh, a lot of times I'll duplicate that and I'll just kind of save that for later. Let's just unlock some of these. Let's move that over. Do something like that. So many things I want to show. Okay, so we have this album art right here. Super cool. We could do some more things and let's just go the other way. Let's kind of flip this. We're going to flip this now. We're going to take um, this text, copying it, And in this case, we're going to do white for now. And then we're going to take this background. And watch what I'm going to show you, which you could do with this background. So right in here, selecting this background, I'm going to go to this fill. And I can choose a fill color, just so you know, Afroja. Good to have you here. Wands in the house. Oh, yeah. All right. So let me switch over. I think there was another. I could have saw another question come through. It's a variable typeface, mentioned that it was. Uh, I could pick some of these colors. I could pick, you know, again, um, uh, this gradient, right? Radial gradients, linear gradients, right? I can start to get something kind of fun. Or I can take this to the next level. Let's take this one, for instance, right? Let's go to gradient options. And keep in mind, this is all from my properties panel. But I can open up the gradient panel from my properties panel. And rather than doing these linear radial, let's go to this last one right over here. Do you see this one? This is brand new. The freeform gradient tool. It's right here. Freeform gradient. Give me those freeform gradients. Boom. Clicking on that. All right. Ah. Uh, uh, checking questions. Okay, so this is already cool enough. Like, look at this. I want to make it bright and vibrant, right? Like I had before, like, boom, let's add that fun pink. Look at that. I, I love how this melts in, but look at these different colors that we get as I start to move this around. Okay, I have this sort of flexibility. Isn't this awesome? I get this variance in color. Look how that green kind of comes through. And all I did is add white. Is that not amazing or what? You know, I'm absolutely like loving this, okay? Lots of ideas are going through my head right now. Let's 
Let's amp this one up some more. There we go. Maybe I have something like that. Kind of like that. Okay, two simple designs. Simple can be good, but let's introduce our artist. Okay, so this is our artist for Lake Stovall. Uh, so yeah, Mohammed, you are exactly right. Gradient can be pretty bad for print. So thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, luckily for this contest, by the way, all I need to do is make a graphic and then post. <laughs> make sure you meet the terms and conditions and then just post album art contest. And again, we only have one day to do this, but again, I could probably knock out a couple in one day. So what do I do? I take this image, copying this, pasting this. Guess what? Just like in Photoshop, we actually have blend modes. So selecting opacity rather than adjusting the opacity. That's not that exciting. It's actually not bad though, by the way. That's actually looking kind of cool. I could change this to say, for instance, overlay, right? And now we get a hint of that artist in this, in this design, right? doing something just like that. It's this part is still a little loud. It's a little much. I could always take this and do some adjustments to it as well. Let's change this to overlay as well. And now we get sort of this, this different look and maybe we will kind of shrink that down or rotate it. Maybe it goes up the side, right? If we think it's being boring, well, let's kind of add some variance to it as I'm doing right now. Right. Oh, I'm digging that. This little overlap I was not planning on, but that little slice is actually looking kind of cool. All right. Let's undo this a couple times. Bring it back. Scale it up. And I, now I can just work on that background right here. Let's take this, cut it. New layer, pasting it in place, separating these two out because I'm going to be able to select that background and still use these new, this new gradient tool. <sighs> so yeah, there we go. That's, that's kind of cool. All right. Again, just playing with this. I probably would want to do some more slicing too, by the way. I think the slicing is really kind of cool. And how can I have this graphic sliced as well? That's like my next thought is kind of slice up this, this image right here. And how I do that is I probably use a mask, right? Here's a new shape, right? Just check it, change it normal. Right, this is just any old, you know, green box, right? And then I also have this image back there. We'll make it a clipping mask. And now I can edit this clipping mask as well. Let's go back. Wait for it. Let's double click in here. This is the clip group. There we go. Grabbing that point. And I can just do add some slices in here. I think that would be pretty sweet. So we add a slice right there. That's only part of it. Selecting this one, we'll duplicate it. Command D. But what if I do Command Shift D? Oh, actually, I don't. Oh, let's go back. Let's undo that. I know, now know that Command Shift D gives me the transparency and I thought it was going to duplicate the current one on top of, on top of my graphic. So let's uh, hide transparency grid. Okay, so we'll duplicate this again. For the second one, I would just change this some more. So that's all I'm doing is having some fun designing. Let me know if you have questions. I don't see a lot of questions. Uh, tink teach on Inkscape. Uh, probably not since, uh, I'm like, I work for Adobe and it's not an Adobe product, but actually I don't know what Inkscape is. So like, let me know. Uh, might be a good idea. Again, I do not know what Inkscape is. 
driving that over here, double clicking this last final edit and I'll have this wrapped up. I've gone for about 20 minutes or so. Doing something like that. You get the idea. Cool. Right, okay. Fantastic. So again, my goal was to make some album artwork for this contest. Okay, and the thing is, is a lot of these tutorials are about Photoshop. So a lot of this stuff is gonna start looking similar, but I'm trying to empower you, show you Illustrator and what Illustrator can do in this space. Um, and I can go on and on, I can jump in, uh, you know, and change this blend mode from let's let's do brighter let's increase this opacity and let's change this from overlay to soft light and see what it does just kind of made it a little bit darker but you get the idea uh Tashia thinks it looks cool and that means a lot to me because that's the goal again show you how to slice up text using basic text by the way uh even getting new fonts as well which is something you know I didn't show at the very beginning but I could easily do that but i'm wrapping up now i don't want to go for too long uh, if i decide to make a third and i want to do i want to make this if it's going to be if your text is going to be really large should it be large and bold you know or could it be elegant or can we have more character to it you know and i encourage you to peruse and use filters within photoshop or Ill illustrator help us it's not in photoshop but if I want to add a script font, for instance, clicking right there, and here's my script fonts being displayed right in here, and you could see how horrible script fonts look. First of all, never do this. Never uh, have a script font. Uh, never use a script font in all caps. But there's my beloved font right there that uh, I actually brought in. And also the spacing should be at zero anytime you're using a script font so everything lines up just fine. But there you go, Lake Stovall. And again, this came from Typekit. So if I decide I want a, a new font, I can actually sync fonts directly from Typekit uh, from within Illustrator, which is brand new. Okay, so again, just another idea, working on it. Uh, uh, Christopher asks if you can work with, uh, um, can you work with the brush swatches and the puppet warp tool on the artist image? That's a good idea. Um, the thing is, is it does have to be vector. Okay, so here I vectorized that face. And then when you say brush, swatches i go into the brushes panel and could i use could i use these brushes on this face so again the, the thing is is it needs to be you know let's do it let's actually try this real fast this might be outrageous but i'm willing to give it a try i'm gonna flip these two i'm gonna take that out i'm gonna go to properties i'm gonna change the stroke to rounded and cornered right and now we have this face you said add brushes to it Let's add a squiggly line, making it look like I just sketched this guy's face, right? It's gonna be pretty bad because his beard's pretty intense. There's lots of little lines in there and I hope everything works out okay. The stroke is really large too. But to answer your question in Christopher, of course you can. Of course you could do that. Of course you could make magic in Illustrator greater than you can honestly uh, to a degree uh, then in Photoshop, not to disparage Photoshop, but once you draw a line in Photoshop, you can't, you have to redraw it. So, Marcos, our goal here is to show you and to convince you you don't have to work alone. That's why we're here, to help you. Uh, the typeface, just to recap as I slow down, typeface I grabbed is probably gone forever. But, uh, started with a 
I can't remember. All right, again, this is taking too long as I go through these strokes. This brings up a good point about file size. Uh, uh, Elk says, do you feel like file size in AI is higher than PSD than Photoshop? It totally, of course, just depends, right? Because right now, look at all these little vectors that I have. This is going to be a pretty large file or larger because we have all these various vector points, right? I really need to take this down to something else. Let's take it down, right? Um, in Photoshop, you're dealing with individual pixels. There we go. It's a little better. But overall, let me save this file. This is going to be really cool. This could turn out to be really cool. I'm kind of digging this, by the way. Kind of into it. Okay, so I'm going to save this file to my desktop. There we are. I'll tell you the size. Call it a day. Uh, thank you, Samuel. Uh, spoken like a true professional, Samuel says. Um, art is sometimes better simplified. I would definitely say for sure. You're right on the same page, Samuel. Like less is more. But that's all part of the process is you get things, you make them really complex, and then you start taking things away, right? It's like they say, art isn't, it's not done when there's not no more that you can add, but the, when there's no more that you, then you can take away. And I forgot who said that, but it was somebody famous and not me. So, okay. So again, simplify, simplify, curate, just leave the best of the best. Here's my file. It's about 74 megs, but guess what? There's also a photo in there and a number of assets, just so you're aware. Uh, here's my different designs, and I'll turn this on. Yeah, you can see what's happening. So thank you so much for hanging out and watching. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day, and uh, that's all I have for you. Uh, Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, yeah, so just kind of switching over. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, I might get something posted to, where is it? Uh, maybe to Instagram later on, uh, but that's about it. Um, stay tuned for more. Let, it, let me know. Send me messages through Twitter or Instagram or wherever would love to hear from you and hear what you want to learn as well or what tasks you want to tackle from design fundamentals to using Illustrator, uh, whatever the case may be. So thanks so much for joining me. Everybody have a beautiful day. Remember, drink lots of water. Get a good night's sleep, huh? Maybe less time on our devices. And I know you're probably watching this on a device. Uh, but yeah, let's rest those eyes and have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks so much for watching.